Hey, welcome back to RC101 with the Dallas Flyer. Today we've got a special treat, the Esheed Racer 250. This is going to be available October 5th from banggood.com for about $150. And this is one of the lowest cost racing quad rotors on the market. Now there are a lot of different types of quads on the market. If uh, it's going to be your first aircraft, I strongly suggest you pick up something like a Cherson CX-10 for like 15 bucks. Learn how to fly before you pick something like this up. If you're looking to do video and get some good stable video, you want to get an aircraft that can have a gimbal on it, something like the Snellflight Ghost here. Uh, this can carry a lot of weight and it gets some really good stable video, but it's pretty pricey. It's close to about a thousand bucks when you include the video monitor, battery, gimbal, camera, everything. Um, so if you want to get something that you can just fly around that carries a lot of weight, has a lot of speed, a lot of power, is really resilient and that you can take to the races, the Esheen Racer 250 for 150 bucks is a really great place to start. Now, this is an almost ready to fly aircraft. That means it comes with almost everything you need. It has the motors, speed controllers, battery, the body, the uh, 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter and a camera, wide angle lens. Uh, the only thing you need to supply is a transmitter and a receiver. Now, Banggood sent us the uh, Fly Sky. Uh, FSI 6 here and compatible receiver which were already pre-bound at the factory so basically um, and this did not come with instructions because it's pretty new um, it will come with instructions in the future I'm pretty sure but I kind of had to figure everything out on my own here so all I had to do was plug the wires in program the uh, onboard computer and uh, take it out and fly it now when it came to putting this thing together and programming the uh, onboard flight computer at first I was a little intimidated, I've never done it before, but there is a wonderful piece of software out there called Open Pilot GCS, Open Pilot Ground Control Station. And if you can install a printer, then you can set up the uh, flight control software for this. Basically, I hooked up the receiver, um, show you real quick, you can just pull this top plate off and uh, you're going to find eight of these uh, nice little screws, two, four, six and eight, two on each rotor arm, and then there's going to be two on the very front, so that's ten all together. And when you pull those off, you're going to find that in between the top piece and the bottom, there's uh, a bunch of little carbon spacers. There's two on each rotor arm to keep this top piece uh, spaced from the bottom. So you're going to pull that off, and you're also going to need to unplug the camera from the base down here. Once you do that, your top plate comes right off there. It didn't come with any instructions, so I had to figure out which plug goes where. So it fits pretty much, the pin's pointing down right about here, and that is the only spot that you can really fit it. Once you get that in, you should be pretty much ready to go. It's a pretty tight fit, but once you get it in there, it's pretty much ready to go. You've just got to plug in a USB cable to the USB port on the aircraft, and then, uh, I installed the older version of uh, OpenPilot GCS 15.0.2, uh, I believe. That's the one that has the uh, software necessary to program something like this. And it was a pretty straightforward process. Um, I updated the firmware on the aircraft. I went through and uh, determined how fast the rotors are going to spin at the lowest throttle speed. Um, I told it what configuration the aircraft would be in. I told it how many rotors it had. I told it what kind of speed controllers it had. Um, it was all pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, you just basically can click through and select. It, it detects pretty much everything about the aircraft, so it gave me no trouble at all. Um, I just set it up as a basic generic quad rotor. I didn't go through and program it to be uh, 3D capable, but this aircraft actually has reversible props. so. If you want to flip it upside down and do rolls and flips, you can program it in such a way that you actually can do that. Uh, this is an aircraft for beginners and for advanced pilots. If you're an advanced racer and you want to go through and do any type of modification to this, I mean, this thing is ready and willing and able. And there's actually a lot of good information on RC groups about this aircraft, and a lot of people seem to be really interested in it. Let's take it outside, see how it flies. Here's the Ishin Racer 250. I strapped my SJ cam on here with some 3M double-sided tape. Everything's ready to go.
about quarter throttle here, so. Time to flat out. That wasn't quite full speed. It could go faster than that. So that's the Ishid Racer 250. Unfortunately, there aren't any races uh, close by me for me to take this thing to, but man, it was a blast to fly. I mean, it has speed, it has power, it was very precise, um, good battery life, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, the supply balance charger, it works okay, it doesn't have a fan on it. I prefer to use my uh, EQ B4 charger here because it does have a fan and uh, seems to keep it a little cooler while it's charging. but. Altogether, I mean, it was a wonderful system, no delay in the FPV, the headlights are really, really good, really bright, really, really help you keep your orientation when you're far away. Uh, the tail light, the nice big red tail light was a really good piece as well. Um, I, I had no trouble with it, the range was phenomenal, I probably could have flown it a lot further away than I did. Uh, this is a good aircraft to take to the racers, good price. Um, I, I was surprised that I didn't really have any trouble setting it up. Uh, the only thing I do say is when you pull this top plate off, you do want to be careful about this uh, power plug that connects to the main board here. Uh, you want to go ahead and disconnect that before you pull this top plate off. Uh, whenever I was pulling mine off, the connector actually came loose and uh, one of the two connections broke. So I did have to re-solder that back into place. But that went okay and everything seemed to work just fine. Uh, the camera itself is a really nice, uh, high quality HD camera. Um, everything's been stripped off it, so it's basically just a camera on a circuit board. So you do want to be careful when you're pulling it in and out that you don't damage it or that you don't cause any short circuits on it whenever you're testing it out. But you can change the focus. This uh, The camera was a little out of focus when I got it, so I did have to adjust the focus a little bit. But um, it was pretty easy. You just unscrew the ring and uh, screw the lens in and out and then screw the ring back in. The uh, aircraft had no trouble carrying around my little SJ cam here or a GoPro cam. Uh, the platform is really smooth, get some good stable video. There is more that I can say about this aircraft than I have time for in this short review. Uh, depending on how well this video does, uh, we'll try and talk more about the Eshin Racer 250. But if you're curious about whether or not you should pick one of these up to go out to the races, definitely, definitely pick one up. Um, it is a lower cost quad rotor. I mean, the, the, the motors are soldered to the main board. You will have to re-solder them if you're ever going to have to replace them. But other than that, I mean, it's an amazing aircraft, amazing package. For $150 to get a brushless quadcopter with the capabilities that this thing has, with the included camera that this thing has, 
I think it's an amazing deal and I think you should definitely check it out. Quad Rotor Racing is becoming more and more popular these days and this is definitely something to check out. So we appreciate you watching RC 101 with the Dallas Flyer. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more.